Annabella Wood is a modern day renaissance woman and she's my guest today here. At 18 she enlisted with the Air Force as an aircraft mechanic and served two years. At 20 she became a career truck driver, eventually founding her own business. Fifteen out of these 33 year career she had in this industry, she specialized in hauling gasoline and other explosives around the U.S. and Canada. She was awarded a Fulbright scholarship at 45 to study the nature of thought and enrolled at Bryn Mawr College as a freshman in the physics department. After three years, she then refined her educational endeavors, earning a Bachelor of Arts in Holistic Studies in Spirituality and Religion from the Union Institute at the University, and she had a minor in Metaphysics and Quantum Physics. She continued post-studies at the Renaissance Science Foundation Academy studying unified physics theory. She's an award-winning singer and songwriter acknowledged by the Independent Musicians Association for her famous song, Truck Driving Mama. She's also released seven music CDs. She is an ordained interfaith minister with the Circle of Miracles and sits on the board of the Twilight Wish Foundation. Currently, Annabella runs her own independent contracting business, which was acknowledged by Angie's national list as Best Contractor of the Year in 2011, one of many customer service awards she's received. She lives in the Bryn Mawr area in Pennsylvania, and in her spare time, she researches perpetual energy machines and is currently studying electrogravitic sciences. Her dream wish is to be and to take part in one of many interstellar flights, which will happen in the future. A year ago, Annabella traveled to the Great Pyramids of the Giza Plateau in Egypt with a group of 160 graduates from the Renaissance Science Foundation, where she spent one full night occupying all three of the Great Pyramids on the Giza Plateau. Her uh, part of this experiment was to activate a potential energy system they suspected might be possible using voice-activated vibratory frequencies. They literally tried to rock the pyramids. Tomorrow she leaves to join this very same group in Cusco, Peru to explore the surrounding areas as well as spend one full night, the night of the full moon, at Machu Picchu. So I'm Jennifer Stein. Welcome to Mainline MUFON here at Radnor Studio 21. I am so delighted, Annabelle. We've been waiting a year to have yes, you come have. and speak <laughs> about this amazing experience. I, I ran into you about a year ago and your eyes were like this and you said, Jennifer, you'll never believe what happened in the Giza Plateau. So thank you so much for being willing to come and share this experience. I've always admired you, and as you can see, you are a Renaissance woman. If anyone thinks you are not, that's my term for you, but you really, really are. Well, thank you, Jennifer. It's a, it's a pleasure. It's been a pleasure knowing you, too. Oh, so. It is. It is. <laughs> We've probably known each other 20 years to have her for yeah. colleges, uh, Global Dialogue Program. Exactly. Right. right. Yeah. So let's start in Egypt, right? All right. What was the impetus to draw you to Egypt? Well, the Resonance Science Foundation has an, an entirely new model of the atom in science. So that's where the difference is. And if we take the atom as being uh, something other than what traditional science says it is, all of a sudden possibilities open up to be able to d work with gravity, to be able to levitate things. Electrogravitics is one of the gravity sciences that's now possible. It opens us up to perpetual energy machines, whereas before uh, we couldn't even think about that. And now we have a few different models that work. So can we talk mm. a little more about how we look at the atom differently? Um, if we go all the way back to Einstein where, where um, quantum physics started. Quantum physics is like a, a wonderful step. Glad we did that, but it's not accurate yet. Unified physics is the next science step. And in unified physics, we actually can explain now, for the first time ever, why two positively charged protons actually marry and hang on to each other for life, which no other science has ever been able to describe. And it's describable that 
these are energetic beings. They're not particles. They're not matter. They are vibrations with certain frequencies and they're standing waves. And they lock into each other through gravity, through electrogravitics, among other things. But um, not to get too complicated, what it does is it changes everything in the material world becomes vibratory rather than material. So even the chairs that we're sitting on, the only reason they hold us up is because the frequency of our bodies does not match the frequency of the chair. So the chair stops us. We can't go through that force field. And it gives the very uh, convincing illusion that it's solid, but it's not. Nothing in this physical world is solid. And so when we resonate that's why it's called the Resonance Science Foundation. When we resonate a vibrational frequency that matches the frequency of the material object, the material object will actually change some of its physical properties. So this is probably how we have these spiritual tradi tra traditions that um, Jesus walked on water, there was healing, things like this in the ancient world. It's also mm -hmm. overlaps in my thinking right into the UFO field where mm -hmm. many people say, well, this being just walked through the wall. Yes. Right? <laughs> or people who have abduction experiences say, well, I floated through the window. And we're like, well, wait a minute. You can't That's do physically that. physically not possible. Right. <laughs> not with the way we're employing science, but yes. possibly yes. applying it from this resonance perspective it makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense. And there, we've had examples where material objects have already uh, behaved this way, and we've considered them anomalies in science, uh, such as in a tornado. We've seen examples of straw going through steel yes. eye beams. Yes, yes, yes. And, and the works. straw is just fine. It didn't crush or anything, but all of a sudden it's in the middle of a steel eye beam as a result of being picked up in a tornado. And no one's ever been able to even hold an intelligent conversation on what happened. But when you see it as a resonance phenomenon, the tornado is actually spinning and it can spin at the same rate as the material that's in the I-beam and in the straw. And so once they match frequencies, the straw goes right into the I-beam as if it's not even there because it's force fields match. So it and molecularly changes yes. things. Yes, right. It molecularly changes things. And they, since they're standing waves, they return back to their original form when the impetus from outside is gone. Wow. So. Wow. Yeah. It's amazing. Very, very, very interesting. Our human limitations are not. Yes. They just are not true. Right. Uh, we just need to learn more. And, and keep researching with open minds of this resonant field that Einstein actually defined in his equations. And when I was at Union Institute and University, I studied E equals MC squared for 18 months straight from wow. all different avenues, yeah. coming in yes. from spiritual and all these other places. Yes. What I love about Resonance Science Foundation is it dovetails all of the different places that we can gather information from, including sacred geometry. Sacred geometry, we found drawings of the actual fabric of space-time on temples in Egypt from 10,000 years ago. Are these like so, tetrahedrons, osecahedrons, like that type of sacred geometry? Well, at, in the talk, I'll be talking about it in more detail, but it is tetrahedral. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And if we look at the Bible and the four faces of God, mm -hmm. I have a whole lecture on uh -huh. resonance science and the Bible. So, for, so it changes everything in that book. For the, for, for the viewing audience, okay. I am a reverend the, after all. For the viewing and listening audience who may have some familiarity with this, what are some quick references where they can learn about platonic solids, tetrahedral sacred geometry shapes? What would you recommend? I would say find the avenue that they're interested in. Ancient, uh, ancient civilizations yeah, have all kinds of information. The Bible gives you all kinds of information, but don't take it as a sacred text. 
take it as showing what can be done when we truly understand the nature of the physical right. body. Right. Even Plato wrote about the platonic solids and drew right. these sacred shapes. Exactly. And all life models them, whether it's a zygote, a fertilized egg, goes through development in certain stages. And of course, everything mm -hmm. also spins. Right. Every cell before it spins has That's this division. You, right? you hit something right. You hit the hammer right on the nail right there. Everything in the physical world spins. If it's not spinning, it's not physical. You can't see it. Like energy, one reason we can't see the energies we can't see is because it doesn't spin. The only things that we only see spinning stuff. And that is what the proton is. The proton is space-time, the material of space-time itself in the form of a funnel cloud, such as a tornado on a very, 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 very small, infinitesimally teensy weensy scale. Right. <laughs> right. And you get two tornadoes spinning and they connect and they will not come apart. And when we do the math on these two, uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and be brave, yeah. they're black holes. These are the smallest, very small black holes. And they have a special gravity that Einstein defined. A black hole has a special level of gravity, which is very strong, but only over a very short distance, as opposed to non-black hole has not as strong a field and it goes out much further. Wow. So because of the nature of the black hole gravity, protons hang on to each other with tremendous force. It's actually what is considered the strong force in today's science. Ah, so it's not the electrons, it's no. the protons. No, it's the protons, our little black holes holding on to each other. The electron is the event horizon of those protons. I've got to take you to so. Electric Universe conferences. Okay, that'll I've be fun. Tell you that'll be a lot of fun. So yeah. let's go back to Egypt. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so what does this have to do with Egypt? Well, right? And this great experience you had there. I, yeah. I want you to be able yeah. to share that. So your group of 160 students went to the Giza Plateau and you occupied all three pyramids on a full night. The probably what, does close to 40 people in each one? 40? Yeah. Yeah, that, uh, we roughly? actually couldn't get 160 people into all three pyramids at, at one time. At the same time. time. Okay, so you went uh, in shifts. Yeah, what most people don't realize is the pyramids are actually solid rock yeah. buildings. Rock, mm -hmm. all the way through with some holes carved out that we mm -hmm. call the chambers mm -hmm. and the tunnels. Mm -hmm. The rest of the thing is solid rock. It's not a hollow building with some rooms in it. So you can't fit more people than you can fit in there. Right. You can't, right. You can't squeeze right. people into a pyramid. Yeah. <laughs> right. So yes, we, we were split up into groups of 40. And starting at 4 p.m. on, on uh, October 7th, October 5th, I'm sorry, October 5th of 2017, we went in, the first group of 40 went in. And we had a uh, 64 tetrahedral grid of crystals, the arc crystal that you Which carried in with you? We carried in with us. Now, One in each pyramid? Yes, right, but we, it went in succession with that first group did the opening ceremony. Uh, we had already set the intent that we were going to communicate with and contact the builders of the pyramids. We know that they're still around somewhere. This knowledge is still somewhere. It's not on Earth at this point in time that we know of but it's somewhere in the universe. And someone who did work like that is not gonna to be too terribly far away because that's a labor of love to build these pyramids. So we had the crystals and went in and did an opening ceremony and began chanting the Aum. In all of your ancient civilizations, it all starts with sound, the word. In the beginning was the word. Right? Mm -hmm. That's Christianity. In the beginning was the sound, and, you could also say. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You even, or in the beginning you, was sound. Was sound, yes. And if you look at it from a vibratory uh, standpoint, that makes sense because you have space time sitting here, and when you make a sound, you get, you get movement through it. What's it going to do? It's going to spin the plonks, right? And when you spin, plonks are what space time is mm -hmm. made out of. When you spin the plonks, if you get them going to such a rate that it begins the black hole, it becomes spontaneous. Sort of like kickstarting a motorcycle, right? If you can get it going fast I enough, the thing runs, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what happens. And so it takes time, patience, 
So the first 40 chanted for two hours and then moved to the second pyramid. The second 40 shows up. Now we have two pyramids going simultaneously. Everyone's chanting Om for another two hours. They move over. A third group shows up. So now all three pyramids were full, right? And we had chanting going on in all three pyramids. Believe it or not, we had, we had a lady who was outside the pyramids. And she saw lights start coming out from the Great Pyramid from about the height of the King's Chamber up. The King's Chamber was the main point of the chanting. We had the, mm -hmm. what others call the sarcophagus. We call mm -hmm. it the resonance, mm -hmm. the resonant box, the resonator. So anyway, we had the resonator going. We had the King's Chamber going. The King's Chamber above it has um, over 100 tons of crystal powder on the granite going up in those ceiling beams. I Most people know don't know that, right? Of pure quartz crystal, um, over 100 tons. And so the crystal began picking it up, right? I was in the third group. So I had the immense pleasure of being in this great pyramid with all three pyramids going. And I, I took time inside the resonator. Each of us got to lie in there. Yes. And Nassim, who has a great big, wonderful chest cavity, <laughs> was at the head of the pyramid of the resonator, his assistant at the foot. And we had the 64 tetrahedral grid of quartz crystals, art, art crystals. It's not quartz, it's a, home, it's a hand grown crystal, very pure. And we had those at the crown chakra as we lay in the resonator in the king's chamber in the Great Pyramid. It was thrilling. So the energy shot through. We had activated the energy through the use of voice. The energy shot through the crystals, right through the crown chakra, right through the spine. Yes. Our entire nervous system is electrical. Mm -hmm. These crystals and the quartz crystals above us are what's called piezomatic. It's a fancy name, piezo, piezoelectric. Oh, yes. And so they, they conduct electricity yes. simply from the pressure of the acoustics. And so, boom, it jumped up the energy levels in our bodies. And my particular experience of it was I felt like my protons were spinning faster and faster and faster. Like, like I just started just... You know, <laughs> and soon I felt like the body had just moved into dissolved. Did you feel weight, that weightlessness? Was. I felt like there was nothing there but my soul. My soul was fine, and then I got scared, and all of a sudden, <laughs> my body was back. back. And I said, "Okay, I didn't come here to be small and scared. Mm -hmm. I let it go again, and mm -hmm. it went out and just merged with with all it is. And and I could see my protons just spinning." almost at the speed of light. Our protons are very close to the speed of light mm -hmm. in their spin. And when you up your amperage, when you get enough sleep, we feel like we've charged our batteries, mm -hmm. you have. And your protons will be spinning faster. Your aura grows. All of these things take place. Good. And I just yes, let good. myself fly out there and then at some point in time, Nassim tapped me on the shoulder and I had, I had the idea, oh my God, I don't know if I can get my protons back in the box. <laughs> <It's just> like, <laughs> I'm going to have to do this now. <laughs> so there was a conscious drawing. You there kind was a of, conscious yeah, effort to come back to put in. this body back into one piece. When you say Nassim, is it Nassim Haramine? Yes. Yes, Nassim so he Haramine, was running the group. I'm he is, familiar with his work. Okay. Yes, he's the head of the Resonance Science Foundation. And it's his course that we all graduated from, and he's going. He goes personally on all of these trips. He's very accessible. Yes, he's and wonderful. He's a wonderful, yeah, just a really good yeah. guy. Also, a Renaissance man. I and would a genius, say. I think. Yes. Or maybe he's in touch with our cousins that already know this. Already you know, know this, and maybe. He's downloading it. Well, it's very interesting. I'll, I'll share with you briefly. I went to the Egypt with John Anthony West, not, and although he has a very interesting perspective, he's not nearly uh, doesn't have this perspective or knowledge or did not. We've just lost him uh, mm. last year. But uh, we all took turns in the what they call the sarcophagus, you call the resonator, and we were also all chanting. Mm. And when I laid down, I went in, I was maybe about the 10th or 12th person to go in. So maybe there was 15 of us standing around all chanting Om, and we took about 
three to four minutes inside the sarcophagus and then we all got tapped and changed because we only had about two hours as a group in there we didn't have the whole night but when I laid down sure enough after I was there for about 30 seconds I started to feel my spinal cord like something was vibrating and I literally felt my rib cage and my hips get lighter, as mm -hmm. if I wasn't heavy anymore, like there was mm -hmm. something changing about my physical body. And there was. And there was. Yeah. I, I, there I knew there really was. There really was. There really was. I think that uh, interstellar space flight uses this technology to uh, simply make the, certainly whoever made the pyramids could make stones lighter. Um, they can also make stones heavier. There were shafts that were drilled by just making a stone heavy and down it went at Saqqara, if you went to Saqqara. Oh, yes, 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 And they yes. had those big shafts that are yes. perfectly the size of the stone at the bottom, and right, they're right, like right. 230 feet deep. So they just made them super they heavy. They just made them super heavy, down it went, and you have a shaft. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, many, so many people think they're wells or entrances to tunnels. It's still quite perplexing. Yeah, I don't know what the shafts are for, but that mm -hmm. is the most likely explanation of how they were made. Wow. Because they are the perfect size of the rocks at the bottom. Right. The one rock, you know, right. one rock per shaft. Right. And, uh, so the, I understand that there were some sort of revelations that people had the next morning when they came out. We, we have about five minutes left, so I'd like you to kind of explain a little bit about what that experience was like and what, what showed up. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we had a lady who physically was not able to be in the pyramids. As you know, the tunnels are very small, small. and you have to be very able to yeah, get it's around like in 42 there. 42 by 42 inches. Yeah. It's got, you got to walk like and, a duck. And you should have a bump cap on. Right. Right. <laughs> but, so she stayed outside. And um, she sort of wondered why she even came on the stupid trip anyway. She wasn't getting in the pyramid, but, but you know how we do that. Mm -hmm. She stopped that and she said, wow. I, there are no tourists here, it's just me with the guards, that's it, nobody's bothering me. And she started talking to the pyramid and she said, what's the message that I can deliver? And she said it was immediate and the pyramid just said, thank you, thank you. She said, if, if a pyramid could be bawling, this one would be bawling with gratitude that we were back and we were activating the pyramid in the way in which it was made to be used. Then, at, at the end of everything, everyone had gone home, and the pyramid's also connected as an energetic resource. Uh, in Cairo, a lab picked up what they called an electrical disturbance on the Giza Plateau while we were in those pyramids. And Cairo really? was 50 miles away, and they picked wow. up an electrical disturbance is what it was called. So uh, something was going on in those pyramids. At the end of it, 4 a.m., the last group came out and they were exhausted and they just laid down on the ground looking up and the stars started moving. A large cloud of stars started moving and they were watching and all of a sudden the lights came down and they came down above the pyramids and they hovered up there. They weren't close enough to identify as ships. At this, They were still high enough, they just looked like lights. So unusual light unusual orbs. Unusual lights hung above the pyramids for, everyone said, from 30 seconds to five minutes. Who knows? Time stands still when you're in this type of energy zone. And, and then all of a sudden, all of them at once, immediately exited together. And the people that saw this got the same type of message, but with different words. It was, thank you for contacting us. We're here, we hear you, and we're going to help you. Wow. We'll be back. Wow. And it was Was just, any of this picked up on camera? Was anything No, because they told us on? not to bring cameras. I'm okay. taking my camera to <coughs> Machu time. Picchu anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, one of the tour guides on the bus on the way home, he had taken his camera in there. And you could see he was animated and really excited. And I happened to be on the bus seat behind the person who was running the tour. And he showed her his picture. And it was the resonator, Nassim and her. And someone's in there and they're chanting. There is an orb larger than human size encompassing 
both of them, the resonator and the person inside, and it goes almost to the ceiling of the king's chamber. I haven't seen this picture since, and I don't know the guy's name, uh -huh. but he was thrilled. Wow. And it was a golden orb. It was this beautiful, one golden orb surrounding wow. the whole thing. Wow. And it's like, there's just no doubt that something took something place. Something got activated. Something wow. took place. Wow. It's so, um, so amazing. I, I'm so grateful for you uh, sharing these experiences, not only with our group tonight, but also here at Radnor Studio 21. So if you've just joined me, uh, my amazing guest here is Annabella Wood, who has been a dear friend for a long time and has studied with Nassim Haramein at the Resonance Science, Science Foundation. Foundation. Thank you. And she will be presenting a wonderful lecture at the Tredyffrin Library with us at Mainline MUFON. So if you don't know anything about Mainline MUFON, we are the Mutual UFO Networks group that meets on a monthly basis. Uh, we do regular programs at the Radnor Library. They're free, they're open to the public, and you can go to MainlineMUFON.com to learn more information. We also put up many of our uh, lectures uh, online, if with permission of the speakers, and you can find that information at MUFON TV as well. So thank you so much for coming in, being oh, our guest pleasure. here at Radnor Studio. Very and if exciting. people want to find you, how can they find you, Annabella? Um, AnnabellaWood.com and all of those things you mentioned, I have a page for each great. and uh, physics is on there too. Great, And great. you can get right to the foundation from there and uh, I, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. Thank you so much for oh, being here. You. It's so special. Oh, it's really, thank really, you, really Jennifer. great. Thank you.